Recently, Boris FX released their very first photo editing software called Optics. Optics is completely different from other photo editing software in that it uses a lot of the same digital effects found in Sapphire. And if you don't know what Sapphire is, well, it's an acclaimed special effects video software that's used in a ton of Hollywood movies, commercials, and TV shows. With over a thousand creative presets and photo effects like lens flares, digital gobos, sun rays, lightning, and moon overlays, Optics can not only help you process a single RAW file, but more importantly, it can help you achieve your final artistic vision all in one piece of software. So it's not really a direct competitor to say Photoshop or Lightroom. This is an entirely different beast altogether. After using this software for over a month now, I thought it would be fun to revisit it and show you some of my favorite tools. If you wanna get this software completely for free, the guys over at Boris Effects have been really generous and they've extended their trial period to a full month just for RF Stoppers readers. So if you wanna take advantage of that, Go to the link in the description below. You can download the software and they'll also give you instructions on how you can redeem your full one month free trial. Let's get right into it. Now I have to admit, I'm a big Photoshop user and one thing that I love about Boris FX is they have not only released a standalone version of Optics, but they also have a plugin. So if you'd like to just use one piece of software and have all of these tools at your disposal, you can take an image like this and come right up to the filter and then go to Boris FX and Optics is right there. So let's go ahead and open this image in optics. This is a photograph of Jason Isbell. This is actually the last performance he ever did with the drive-by truckers. And one thing I thought would be really interesting to do with this image is try to add a little bit of a lens flare because you can see the stage lighting looks really cool on him, but I think having a little bit of flare could make this look just a little bit more interesting. Now you'll notice here on the bottom, you have a lot of different options. These are kind of all of the buckets of effects that you can use. So you can go in here, you can change the color, you can do diffusion and blurs. This is the uh, film lab where you can actually change your image to make it look more like uh, film grain and film stock. The one I'm gonna be using here for lens flare is under light. And if we scroll over, you can see all of these different effects that you can use. This is the Sapphire Lens Flare. The lens flares in this software are actually created by their Sapphire program. So if I click on this, you can see we have a ton, and I mean a ton. I mean, look how many different lens flares there are that you can choose between. And they're really dynamic too. This isn't just a lens flare where you just set it and drop it and it just kind of does its own thing. Every one of these is gonna be unique. So I can pick this one here. This is Sunsoft and I could place it over our existing light up here, and you can see it creates these really cool lens flares down here. If you want something that looks a little bit more like an actual camera lens, we can come up here to the Tekina lens. And because there's so many different effects in here, it can be a little overwhelming. Once you find some of the ones that you really like, you can just star them, and now they'll be in your favorites catalog to where you can just hit favorites and now you're only seeing the lens flares that you like. So let's jump to this next image. I'm gonna open it back into optics. Let's come down here to the Aurora setting. And what's really cool about this is you can create all of these really cool lighting effects right in the software. This particular image, I did a long exposure. I have a whole video of this on our F-Stoppers channel. And you can see the lights all blurry and looks really cool. But what if we wanted to embellish that and add even more lighting effects? We could use this. Let's try using this one where I can bend all of this around, make a really dynamic shape. And then if I come down to parameters, it allows me to bump up the stroke size here, play around with the lightness a little bit. You can see just how much control we have over this. Let's go ahead and hit the cog up here for done and you'll be able to see the before and after. I think this effect's really cool and you could really play around with this to get it to blend in perfectly, but it just it's gonna give that finishing touch that I think this image really needs. Here's one of the first photographs I think I ever created. This was shot on like a little point and shoot camera in Nashville. And I just sat outside on this bridge and captured all of these lightning bolts. And then I composited them all together, but check out what you can do with optics. We can create more lightning strikes and I'm curious to see if they look as real as these. Now the lightning is going to be found under render. So in this image, I feel like the lightning is so far away that it might really make it look compelling if we placed one bolt much closer. Let's come down to parameters. And one thing we definitely need to do is we need to warm up this bolt. You can see all of these are a little bit more yellow and this one's very blue. So maybe we will turn that to like a brown color. We can vary the branches. So if I 
increase this, you can see we get more branches coming off. We can also change the branch length. Let's make everything not quite as bright. Let's also make the bolt a little bit thinner. Let's try to match it to those other ones. And you can really change every element of this lightning bolt. It's pretty incredible. And there you go. What required being at the right place at the right time and taking a bunch of images. Now you can kind of create that effect right here in the software. For this final image, I just want to show you a few of the things you can do with Film Lab. So if we come here, let's go to Film Damage. And there are some really cool effects here that just give your image kind of an old timey look. You can go through all of these and it adds some dust. You can do different uh, movie looks. It's kind of cool. It makes it almost look like a Polaroid from like the 70s. The Super 8 is kind of interesting. If we go to parameters, you also have control over all of this as well. You can control the grain, the scratches, the hair. So what I love about this software is it just gives you so many options and it gives you control over literally everything. As you guys know, we've reviewed a lot of software on our website. In many cases, you can add dust and scratches and stains to your image, but many times it's just an overlay and there may be only three or four different overlays that you can use. Optics is very unique because you literally have control over everything. And that's the big point that I wanted to really make with this video is just how much control you have over this. So if you're the type of photographer that likes to take your images a little bit further than just processing the raw file, I really think optics might be perfect for you. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Boris FX, they've allowed F-Stoppers readers to have a full 30-day trial, which I believe is twice the length of the normal trial. To get this, just simply add the Optics monthly subscription option to your cart, enter the code below. You will have to create a login and enter a credit code in the process, but don't worry, you will not be charged and have 30 days to cancel if you do not want to continue using Optics. Also, if you enjoy content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel, head over to fstoppers.com where we feature free daily content and if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials.